Holly of Holly Soap Making. I recently participated in the Soap Challenge Club circling Taiwan Swirl Technique and thought I'd share how I made my entry soap. You'll find information and details listed below along with links to the Soap Challenge Club website where you can see current challenges or purchase access to all the past tutorials. If you're interested in the recipe I used, you'll find it along with an alternate recipe listed at the end of this video where I enter them into a soap calculator. And just a quick reminder before I get started that soap making involves the use of sodium hydroxide or lye, which is a caustic substance that can cause chemical burns and permanent eye damage. So be sure to learn and practice lye safe handling procedures during the entire soap making process. If you need help with beginner soap making or lye safety, check out the links in the safety section below this video. My color inspiration for this soap was actually my phone case. I've always wanted to make a soap that resembles the design and colors on the case, but for this soap I just used the color palette. I prepared some orange and pink clays by hydrating them with a little distilled water, just enough to make them fluid and easy to blend in later. I prepared some indigo powder by mixing it with olive oil and allowing the powder to sink to the bottom. This indigo is so intense that it colors the oil just fine without adding heat. I also prepared some chromium oxide green by mixing it with a little olive oil until it was completely smooth. And lastly, I mixed some water soluble titanium dioxide with equal amounts warm distilled water. I decided to use the titanium dioxide partly because I wanted to lighten the soap, but I also like how opaque it can make the soap appear, and I really wanted that opaque ivory color to be part of the color palette. Once the colorants were ready, I made the lye by adding the sodium hydroxide to the distilled water. I stirred until it was dissolved and then sat it aside to cool. I made this soap in a two and a half pound loaf mold using two dividers. Instead of setting the dividers up to make three equal sections, I wanted the center portion to be larger, so I placed the dividers the way you see here. I blended until just barely reaching an emulsion, then divided the soap for the different colors. I weighed the entire batch, subtracted the bowl weight, and then calculated the amounts for each color. For the light orange soap, I added about a quarter teaspoon of the orange clay per cup of soap. I 
I poured off a little of that to create a dark orange soap and just added a bit more of the orange clay until I was satisfied with the color. For the burgundy soap, I first created a reddish pink by adding about 1 8 teaspoon of the orange clay and 1 quarter teaspoon of the pink clay. Then I added drops of indigo until the soap looked more of a burgundy color. For the green colors, I first added a few drops of the green oxide to create a light green. Then I poured some of that off and created a darker teal green by adding drops of the oxide and indigo until I was satisfied with the color. To incorporate the titanium dioxide into the rest of the soap, I added it to a small amount of soap first and then used my mini mixer to blend it in well. Then I added that back to the rest. Since the middle portion also includes white, I poured off enough for that and then transferred the rest to the same kind of measuring cups with spouts that made it easier for pouring this technique. For the middle section, I just alternated the colors until I ran out, pouring a little of each color at a time. This created really fine lines, and if I try this again, I would probably pour more of each color at a time in an attempt to get wider bands of color in the finished soap. and process the soap to help it get through a complete gel phase. I removed it from the oven the next morning and even though it was still a little soft, I unmolded it that afternoon. I was able to cut it the next day and waited a few more days to trim and clean up the bars.
Since I was making a cold process soap, I left the type of lye set to sodium hydroxide or NaOH. My recipe oil weight was 1000 grams. I did have some leftover soap that you'll see me unmold at the end of this video, so I probably could have set my recipe oil weight at 900 grams. My lye concentration was set to 35%, which means my lye solution consisted of 35% sodium hydroxide and 65% distilled water. I left the superfat at 5% and my fragrance usage rate was 40 grams per kilogram. This recipe does contain lard, so I'll list a lard free recipe I really like following this one. Once you have everything entered, you just select to calculate the recipe, then to view or print it. SoapCalc will give you a really nice listing of all of your ingredients, including the amount of sodium hydroxide required to saponify your oils. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you found something useful here to help you in your soap making.